Welcome to lesson nine of Quick and Effective Environment Illustration. In this lesson, we're going to wrap up the blocking stage by blocking in the foreground a little. In the foreground, right now we've just got a mass of dark. And we've got to start breaking that up to get a little interest in there. Because our layer shapes are are just about there. We'll come back and edit, do some final, uh, you know, really zoom in, really render out, refine out those layer shapes, bring it to 100%. We're still going to spend a little time doing that. But right now, they're all up to the next level. You know, we block them all in, the background, the middle ground, the foreground, just blobs. They started just blobs, you know, and, and they were just gray. But we we got the value right first. We got the main shape right. Then we refine that shape, basically to get it more right. And then we add our detail with a light layer, and we 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 treat that as a separate layer shape, which we block in, refine it, get it just right. And then we have all these layer shapes set up for us that you can that we can now jump to, jump to the background, jump to the foreground, and start filling in with color and texture and, and bringing the picture to the next level. Start the rendering process. Start painting more than more than just carving out shapes and setting up. In a sense, we've been drawing up until now drawing with Photoshop with solid colors on separate layers and then we're going to use those layers to paint in the foreground this tree this tree shape and all the the landscape beneath it I'm going to try to treat it just as as one mass one large object where there's not going to be there's going to be value and color change but nothing dramatic enough that I would need a new layer shape masked out now I'm watching the tangents from these branches that are created and watching the, the resulting shapes to make sure that everything stays balanced with any new marks I'm putting down as we as we finish up this this layer shape stage of the illustration this is this is the last refinement of the blueprint of the foundation and the rest is really icing on the cake in a sense it's color and texture to just keep bringing each element to a new level. So right now I'm I'm using the same technique I've been using of painting in, over painting a little, carving back out to refine that edge and, and find the edge that looks looks best. And if I can't get the branch right, you know, I'll try again, I'll try again. And don't don't force it. Just keep trying it until 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 you start to feel it's in going in the right direction. Now we can move on <clears throat> and really start start the texture work. See this layer, we've locked transparency. And I can just freely go over all these loose branches and all this detail and just not worry about painting within the lines right now. Not worry about messing up what I've already put down.
If I flip it, again, I'm checking balance. Because as we add, now we add new elements. You know, any new element can, can change the composition dramatically. You know, if you were to add a figure, a, a, a red cloaked figure in this foreground, you would have a, a dr drastically different composition and, and image than if I if you were to leave it as I'm going to leave it with no no figures in it, just the landscape. So I'm not going to add anything as dramatic as a character, but as I add a little more detail and a little more light and shadow and a little more texture variation. You've just got to be sure that you're not disturbing what's already there. And see, I've got the large airbrush, so I can freely change these colors. Easily go over the entire, the entire layer shape without having to repaint anything. Now I'm keeping the I'm keeping the value scheme that we've set up with a dark foreground, medium middle ground, and a light background. But I'm adding a little texture and a little a little color variation within that dark foreground. And sticking to your value scheme is is really the whole point of of doing the work following a procedure cuz we've nailed that value scheme down and as long as i stick to it and i don't add anything that's that's so far out of the scheme i can feel free to add what i want in this foreground to add rocks and and textures and maybe a path maybe some shrub, more shrubbery and more branches and well I'm go there's going to be lots of branches and and we can do all this but we, but basically if you squint down this whole foreground stays the dark mass that it's that it's been since the very beginning so now I can break up this dark mass with a little interest a little variety a little detail, adding in a tree trunk here, quickly trying to suggest it, as always, not trying to to copy any particular photograph, any particular reference, just trying to feel, go by feel, go by look, does it, is it look like it's the texture that you're going for, you know, because you 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 need a technique to get the texture. You can't go and paint grass one one blade at a time. So if you notice, I'm I'm using black now. I'm I'm as dark as I as the picture goes. Those shadow shapes. And you, if once you've set your black point, you know that that's that's the darkest dark in the image. There's no there's no more mysterious dark unknown shadow than that spot that is black. Now within this shadow world, I can come in with the ambient light from the sky. And all this blue is going to represent the top planes of rocks, top planes of, of boulders in the foreground. That's It's not catching the direct light of the setting sun. It's only catching the bounce light from the sky. Now we've got a solid foundation here to start coloring and texturing the image. And starting the next lesson, we're going to do just that.